Hello and welcome to week three of I Was Made For This. My name is Rick and I'm so glad you've joined us for this session. By now you've probably found your rhythm and you've begun to make connections with other people in the group, which is great. You've also probably realized there's a little bit of work to hosting a group. One great way to ease that burden is to share responsibilities with other people. In the back of your discussion guide, you'll see that there's a small group responsibility calendar. Go ahead and check that out and talk through some of the ways to divvy up responsibility amongst your group. A great way to share responsibility is to have someone else lead the discussion for a week. Or you could even have someone else host the group at their house. Another option is who's going to lead prayer. And finally, a critical one, who's gonna bring the snacks? These are all suggestions. They're pretty simple, easy ways to connect your group and grow deeper together and share those responsibilities. Again, thank you so much for joining us this week. Here's the teaching from Pastor Ken. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Week three of our small group experience for I Was Made For This. If you're still here in week three, that means you haven't been voted off the island. So we are so glad you are still a part of it. And I hope you're enjoying your guest host. We had a great one today and we got a great one in store for you next week as well. What I wanna talk about just briefly today is a little bit about how do you live a peaceful life? How do you live a peaceful life? And just go ahead and admit the reality. We all can't go on vacation uh, you know, perpetually forever. So we live the regular life that we live, but how do you find peace? Uh, if you have young kids around your house, I guarantee you, you have said it, and if you haven't said it, at least you've thought it, how do I get some peace and quiet around here? Uh, I can promise you from personal experience, uh, now that two of our three boys have been you know, taken off to college, it's, it's very quiet, and it's a different kind of a peace, and even though it's quiet, there's still some things that are not fully at peace. Uh, you know, you've heard of peace, and you know, I got the Nobel Peace Prize, it's a worldwide prize that's you know, awarded to people, honestly, regardless of peace is ever achieved or not. Uh, you have a lot of times when someone passes away, you'll see RIP. What does that mean? Rest in peace. People tend to say that when someone passes away. And of course, you know, depending on whether or not they had a relationship with Jesus Christ is the ultimate thing that determines whether we do have peace for all eternity or honestly, the lack thereof. Peace, for so many people, it, it, it seems like a rare quality, but yet it's something that God promises. This world has not been at peace hardly ever. In fact, in the whole history of the world, there's only been worldwide peace for 400 years. And that's not even 400 years in a row. If your kids are 17 years or younger, our country has been at war for their entire lives. Think about that. For the past 17 years, the United States has not been at peace. We've been battling different countries on different parts of the world, trying to maintain peace. And some of you, you might even be thinking to yourself, man, I was doing pretty good. I thought I was peaceful until I came to small group today and we started talking about all this stuff. But if we're honest, I think we can all think of times in our life when our, our measure of peace is threatened and things are trying to fight against it. The question I would ask today is this, how do you live a peaceful life? What do you actually do? And I want first to turn to the Bible to see what the Bible has to say about this. Number one, first and foremost, never forget this. The only way to truly experience peace is to be at peace with God yourselves. In Romans chapter five, verse one, Paul says, therefore, we've been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to be justified or to justify something, it doesn't mean like we're coming up with an excuse. I mean, I, I've done that so many times, whether it's exercise, nutrition, it's a promise that you make and then something happens and the promise is not fulfilled and we try to sometimes justify our behavior or justify our lack of follow through. That's not at all what the Bible is talking about here. When Paul says that the scripture says that we've been justified through faith, justified by faith is saying, I'm guilty, I'm a sinner who's in need of a savior. To be justified by God means that it's the way God sees us. In fact, in 1 John 1, 9, scripture says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, we have to trust someone with our lives. And the only way we'll ever be able to have that right standing or a righteous standing or to be justified in the eyes of God is to make sure that we are in right relationship with God 
through the confession of our sins and the forgiveness of our Father and to realize that through faith, not because of who we are, but because of who he is and what he's done, he sees us and he says, you are innocent, you are blameless, and you are pure, and I accept you as my own. When you think about the person to trust in life, you can trust family, you can trust your friends, you can trust coworkers, you could even try to trust yourself. And the fact of the matter is, all those people, ourselves included, are unreliable. Why? Because we're human. No, it's only by trusting God with our lives that we truly are able to experience peace. Uh, let me ask you to take a quick personal quiz here. What are the areas of your life right now where peace is suffering? What, what's causing the lack of peace? Is it a person? Is it a situation? Is it yourself, your own thought life? Is it something you've done, something you're wrestling with? What I can guarantee you is the cause of the, the lack of peace, it's never God, unless we come to the realization that we're living in a way that's out of sync with God, that would be called sin. And, and that's God's consciousness. That's, that's God's conviction of his spirit where he raises the unrest with life as it is until we live in unity with him. But, but here's the reality. God's the one and only who can truly bring peace. At times, other people will contribute to our peace, but, but realize that people aren't perfect. So sooner or later, they let us down. We even let ourselves down. So the first step to peace is to be in a right relationship with God himself. The second thing that will help add peace to our lives is simply this, to realize as we grow in our faith, we will experience more peace. Paul's the one who wrote this. He says, whatever you've learned from me, whatever you've received from me, heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. You know, when we're young in our faith, there's a lot of things that can like rock our sense of peace. But as we grow firm in the Lord, it's our ability to hold on to God's peace is that what the very thing, it's holding on to God that allows us to prevail through the fiercest storms life may bring our way. I've seen people face some of the most challenging circumstances life can throw their way, but yet those who are anchored, rooted in Christ, not only do they seem to walk through the valley, but God gives them a peace even in the midst of it. It could only come from God himself. There's a certain peace man cannot muster. It's the result of a growing relationship over the course of time, and that's the gift of peace. You know, you can learn directly from God by spending time reading and thinking about the Bible, but here's what Paul is basically saying. Paul is directly speaking to the church in Philippi. It's a church where he had spent time with them. They had lived life. They would shared relationship. And what Paul is saying is he says, what I have, I want you to have. And he says, I want you to grow in your faith and grow in your understanding and and even today, there's a lot of times we don't see Jesus, but what we do see is we see one another. And you look around the group, and again, none of us fully has it put together. We're here to find friends and to find freedom, but it's in the community of living life together, we encourage one another. And it's another person's strength, it's another person's promise, another person's prayer. It's their relationship, it, it bleeds over, and it brings the sense of God's peace as we're living life together in relationship, not just with God, but with one another as well. The more you grow in your relationship with God, the more you'll become like him. The more you'll see situations like him. You'll see opportunities the way God would see them. And the more you experience God's peace, listen, the more you will desire and long to experience him. Let me put it another way, the more you act in a godly way, then it's the less sin we commit. The less sin we commit, the less strife we have, the fewer consequences we'll have to face. And the more we experience God, the more we want to be drawn even closer into his presence because that's the place where his peace and his presence and his power prevails. Here's a third thing we always need to be mindful of when it comes to peace. Our daily decisions will help determine how much peace we have in our lives. In Proverbs 16, 17, the Bible says, The highway of the upright avoid evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Your life and my life are the culmination of the decisions that we've made every day to this point. Who we are today is a direct reflection of those daily decisions. Another way of saying it is the seed we throw today, the decisions we sow today, becomes tomorrow's harvest. Decisions determine our direction. 
Now that statement's either going to make you, you know, feel kind of good about how things are going, or it might make you want to throw up. If we're honest, we've all had those days where we've made some good decisions. We've all had those days where we've made some bad decisions. Here's the good thing. The good news is no matter what decision we've made in the past, where do we start off here? The pathway to peace is a right relationship with Jesus Christ. The pathway to future peace is making good decisions with Christ on a daily basis. So the question you and I have to answer is what exactly is it that you want your life to become? What do you want your life to look like in five years? For those of you who are married, what would you want your marriage to look like in five years? Your kids, your grandkids, your career. Do you have that picture in your mind? Then here's the second and the follow-up question. Then what are you willing to do to help create that experience as God guides you? And to do it his way. What I know to be true is the greater the calling, then the greater the change that would be required. The greater the calling and the greater the change that's required, the the more peace will, will be a threat against that. But when we do it his way, God promises to be with us and to guide us and to lead us. It will never happen overnight, but over the course of time, making better decisions, godly decisions, day in, day out, it compounds itself. It's compounding interest, just as compounding interest is to your banking and your financial life. There's a compounding interest to making godly decisions in your spiritual life. And the peace of God continues to grow, listen, no matter what seems to be happening in the world around us. The bottom line is we, we live our days and how we choose to live has so much to do with obedience in accordance to God's word. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, it's one of my favorite passages in all the scripture, written by one of the wisest men who ever walked the face of the earth. And here's what he says. He says, we're to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to submit to him. And he promises to make our path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord, shun evil. This will bring health to your body, nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. And then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats would brim over with new wine. What scripture teaches us so clearly is that the pathway to peace is God's way. You're never going to get there on your own. And sometimes we try to create peace. We try to control peace. We we try to do everything we can to manipulate situations, sometimes people, to discover peace. But the reality is the only true way to experience peace is when we live life God's way, God first. The path to peace is the one that avoids evil. Again, you hear the word evil, and that's such a strong, that's such a strong word, and we say, well, that what does that actually mean? Listen, anything that's against God is evil. Do not position yourself in your thought life. Do not position yourself in your actions in any way against God. Because when we do, we are forfeiting the ability to even have an opportunity to truly experience the peace of God. Now, here's the great thing about peace. You you don't have to remember all the things of, you know, the living a truthful life, all the things that you've said. You're just saying, this is who I am, and I'm striving to live life God's way. To live life God's way requires we pursue things that are good. We, We avoid the sinful things. You think about this pathway to peace. Let me just dive in and dig in a little bit right here, just just briefly. How do you handle your money? I would ask a follow-up question or or a preliminary question. Who owns your money? Do you own it or does God own it? How do you invest it? Now, I can almost guarantee the room might have gotten a little bit tense right there. But here's the reality. Do you actually trust yourself with your money or do you trust God? Again, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7, the Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender. Is it credit cards, school loans? Is it, is it consumer debt? If you trust God with your money, Jesus says, give and you will receive and the gift will be returned unto you, full, pressed down, shaken together. You'll have to make room for more, running over, poured out into your lap, and the amount you give will determine the amount that you receive back. That's in Luke chapter 6. That's not a bad way to do financial planning. There's another passage uh, in Malachi where God says, test me in this. He says, am I the Lord of your life? Do you honor me first? And he says, if you do, I will protect you. I will bless you and abundance so much you cannot even contain it. 
Again, a lot of us would think that peace is building our own reserve. It's my reserve of wisdom. It's my reserve of knowledge. It's my reserve of money. And if anything threatens me, and if anything threatens what I have, then I'll pull on my reservoir. Listen, that is a recipe for disaster. What God wants is God wants, he's our reservoir. He is our provider. He is the one that we turn to. And he says, you honor me. And when you honor me, it shows that you trust me. And peace will always be the byproduct of right living. You can't buy peace. It's the gift of God. The peace, then the pathway to peace, it starts by surrendering at the feet of Christ. Before you can have peace of any kind, you have to have peace in your heart. Let me ask you a question today right here, right now, are you truly at peace with God? That, that question has two answers. Number one is, do you, have, do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? And if you don't, then that's something to talk about. Talk to your group leader. Talk to someone else in the group and say, you know, it's, it's one thing to have a knowledge of God, but do I have a relationship with God? And the second question to follow up to that would be this, you know, maybe you know him, but is there an area of your life to be honest, you haven't been trusting God. You, you haven't been basing your decisions on his will or his plan for your life. You've been doing it your own way and you wonder, how is it possible to be a son or a daughter of the Lord God Most High, but yet still I don't sense his peace in my life? It comes back to the decisions that we make. Peace is when we learn to trust God and we grow deeper in our daily faith and decisions. I would encourage you to develop a regular Bible reading plan to get more out of God's word into your life. Fill your heart, fill your mind with the truth of scripture. Spend time with one another. People in your small group, it's a great place to start. And finally, don't ever forget this. Peace comes through your daily decisions. So the question I'd ask you is simply this. What do you need to start doing to see more of God's peace alive and at work in you? And what might you need to stop doing? Because to be honest, you know that it's robbing God's peace in your life. Hey, I'm going to pray for us in just a moment here, and I pray that you would enjoy your discussion. I'm so glad you're here. Do not miss this opportunity to take another step to experience God's peace for you. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for even a time like this when we can gather literally all around this region uh, as friends and as groups to really just to find friends and to find freedom and Lord, most importantly, to discover what does it mean to live life according to your way and your calling? Would you give us wisdom to know the things that we need to do that would help us to experience more of your presence and more of your peace? And give us the courage to make those decisions to stop doing the things that threaten your presence and it, and it threatens your peace and it separates us from you. Lord, above all else, we long to live in your presence, in your way, and no matter what we face, to experience the peace that truly transcends anything this world might come our way. We love you. Thank you so much for loving us. We pray these things in your name. And everybody said, amen. Hope you guys have an awesome discussion the rest of today.